Hello everyone, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be going through this paper, which is titled as Neural Query Expansion for Code Search. It's from authors from Facebook and Rice University. So this paper proposes a neural network based model, let's call it M. It would take in a query Q that will have certain number of words, let's call it WK. It augments this query Q, let's call it QA. That will have certain number of more words, let's call it WK plus M. So the extra M words that you see over here, are semantically similar to the words that happen to occur in query Q. As the result of which, now when you do a query to the database, let's call it D, you are supposed to have a high hit rate compared to if you earlier did a query on the database using the original query, you would have had a lower hit rate. And they do the POC for their model for the code search use case, in which they essentially show the earlier model which was also made by Facebook, which is called NCS, that would take in a query in natural language format and return the relevant code snippets for which the query was fired. So the authors in this paper show if you have NQE, which is Neural Query Expansion, also integrated to the earlier version of NCS, they observed relatively better results for short queries. So now let's delve into the inner working of this. So we'll start with the abstract first. One recent tool called NCS takes in a natural language query and outputs relevant code snippets, often being able to correctly answer the stack or flow questions. But the question is what happens if the queries are shorter or they have a vague intent in them, which means it's kind of not clear to what the users want, which is a prominent use case in software engineering, because as developers, at the end of the day, you just know what functionality you'd want to implement and might not know the exact method names or maybe the related method names related to that implementation. So that's why there is a need for having a sophisticated code search mechanism that would understand your vague intent as well, possibly by expanding into certain more number of keywords automatically which is where the NQE comes into the picture and then fire that query using existing code search technology for the relevant database. And the authors in this paper, while doing a study of the logs for the search database, they found that the short queries have less successful code search sessions, which means there is a lot of query reformulations involved. So query reformulation as in you or paraphrase the query for the hope for it to get relevant results. So that's what they found if the queries are a little shorter, there's a lot of query reformulation that happens and people spend a lot of time while browsing the results because you don't find the results in the top K initial suggestions. So because of this observation, they found that NCS alone with short queries might not be productive enough. So they came up with a technique that automatically expands the query, which is NQE, that predicts the keywords that co-occur with the query words in the underlying corpus. So once you have those co-occurring pairs, those are essentially appended to the existing query post which NCS is applied. Exactly that's what they have written. Like NQE and NCS were able to perform better than using just NCS alone. Okay, let's move forward. So they found these two interesting results while doing an analysis of the code search database. So they found as you increase the length of the query, which means the number of words increase, average number of sessions per event decrease. So here, an event can be seen as a query reformulation or kind of time spent for doing the scrolling for getting the relevant result. So all of that decreased as the query length increased, which clearly indicates towards the bias of the underlying search engine that favored or understood the query when it was pretty long. So the second result that they found was there's a positive correlation to as the query length increases, they found less number of session with just one event. So as I already said, an event could be like hovering a text, copying a text, the time spent, or maybe query reformulation. So all of that thing happens pretty less if you have longer queries. So yeah, these are the two results that they found. And then they went ahead and also evaluated on Stack Overflow dataset. So if you would use just the NCS method, on the other hand, if you combine NCS and NQE for top one and top 10 results, there's a significant increase in the results that you can see, like from 10 to 15 and from roughly 18 to 25. So there has been an increase in the hit rate if you use the query expansion method. So now let's see to the algorithm to how NQE exactly works. So let D be the corpus of programs where each of the document or the program is labeled as small d and VM be the vocabulary of all the method names that you have in the corpus. So let's take an example to understand this. Let D be equal to 100, which means you have a database of 100 programs. So each of the program will be labeled as DI, like D1 being the first program, D2 being the second program in that 100 series. You extract all the method names from these 100 programs 
let's call it as VM. So the size of this would be, let's say 200, considering each program would have two methods. Then for every method, you basically do a splitting at camel casing at stake casing, because that's a usual convention to how things are written. And you do the union of all the keywords that you get post splitting, you call that VK. So that is what they have written. So till now we have three notations. We have VK, we have VM, we have small d and we have capital D. Okay. So now we have a query that is labeled as X, which has N number of words, X1 to XN. And each of the unit belongs to VK. So if you remember, VK was nothing but the union of all the split words that you did from all the method names. So for this query on the database, you'll get a ranked list of all the documents that you have. So let's consider for the query X, DX is the expected document that you want, which is again one of the documents from the whole set of D. So ideally what you would want that the rank of this document in this list of R is as minimum as possible, where the lower index denotes how important a certain document is for a given query. So that's why they have written, you want a numerically lower rank of DX, which means the search results should be as close as possible to zero because that will be something that user will see in the initial results. Okay. So let's say now we have a query expansion model Q that returns another set of keywords X EXP. So the final aim or the goal of the query expansion model is to attempt to kind of ensure if this thing holds true. So if you see what this talks about is like the rank of the expected document for the query that is expanded should have a lower rank compared to the rank for the expected document if you don't use the query expansion model. So if this thing holds true, it simply says a query expansion model is working. So yeah, moving forward. So the NQE model is basically an encoder decoder model for a given query X as the input. It tries to produce a sequence of methods. And once you have the sequence of methods produced, you do a split function of that camel case and snake case to get your extra keywords that you add to X to get the final output of XEXP. So as we proceed forward, we'll see to how they create this X and Y. But for now, let's consider X and Y exist. Then for any given query X, you'd pass it to the embedding model, which is again trainable. And once you get the embedding, you sum all the embeddings of each of the components of those query, which becomes EX, which is nothing but the entire sentence or the query representation. Once you have that, that goes as an initial state to the RN model and you start decoding one step at a time. So this is typical to how a translation model is trained. You have input query X, which passes through the decoder and you get a thought representation, which goes to the decoder at every time step and you produce method name at every time T on which you further apply the splitting function to get a set of keywords, which you combine with the original query X and you get your expanded query. Okay and your decoder step is repeatedly applied till the end of the sequence is sampled. And for the decoding strategy, they I guess play around with beam search. So yeah, they play around with beam search to get the top K most likely sequence that have the maximum likelihood. And apart from this, they also apply the attention mechanism to capture the important segments from the input query while producing the output at every time step T at the decoder end. So yeah, this is exactly same as how machine translation and all of these sequence sequence models are trained. The only thing to look out for here is to how do you generate X and Y pairs for the data set D that you have. So now let's see to that section. So from every document D, they first extract all the method calls which form the Y. So let's consider a program. It might have, let's say three method calls. So such sequences is what they extract and make it as Y1, Y2 and Y3. And like this, they do it for all the D documents what they have. Eventually they have bigger set of Y from which they keep just top 50 TF-IDF methods from all of the method names that they have. So this is just to ensure like you have most representative methods. So now once you have the list of all the methods for any document D, the next step is to extract and create X query. So for that, what they do is every method name is then tokenized in the same manner to how NCS does it, which is by splitting at snake case or camel case, filtering out all the stop words. So all of these stuff is done. And then they employ two ways to how do they form X query. The first one is to take top 75% TF-IDF keywords from all the keywords combined from Y. So let's say across D documents, you have 2D count of methods that you have, you tokenize them, you have all the keywords, then you do the TF-IDF and whatever top 75% TF-IDF words that you have based on their scoring. 
you just keep those words as respective keywords for the x query so that is first way how you do it second is for each y you just take the top one idf word and that essentially becomes your x query so in this case you'll have one word in your query and you'll have certain number of sequence of methods for the document d and its respective x query so after applying all of these two methods they have roughly 1.8 million data points on which they essentially train their model this was an automatic way to how did they generate x query and y the second method was to generate them using manual method they ask developers to perform the following task so given a y they create x query from length 1 to 6 which means they are covering all the short length as well as the long length queries and they wanted to see how well the tfidf method correlated with how humans essentially selected the words this is how they created their x and y paired and then they trained their encoder decoder model which we already discussed okay moving forward so now then they have results and experiments we can clearly see let's say the red one is the ncs which is a search model the green one is ncs plus nqe and the third one is another search model with frequent item set mining so whatever they claim like this is supposed to work for short length queries is actually working so if you see this segment for le query length one and just two the search model with in performs much better compared to other methods and similarly if you have a search method which is bm25 in that case as well for short length queries let's say one and two bm25 with nqe performs much better compared to just using bm25 alone so yeah that's the entire idea then they also talked about frequent item set mining as one of the expansion models against which they evaluate so it is a non-neural method that captures the notion of co-occurring methods or co-occurring words in a language so the way you do it is like you calculate the support of how frequent two words occur together divided by how frequent the word alone occurs so you have the ratio of these two things and finally you name all of this ratio as confidence so you usually put thresholds on support as well as confidence differently to suppress any random behavior that might have triggered the confidence score so in this case authors use 0.5 as the confidence value as a threshold and the support threshold to be three so yeah that's pretty much for this paper so if you like such content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye